All right, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about it a little bit earlier in the podcast. It is here. It is time. We have the man recently signed, D-Tackle Man. He's got played at the University of Maryland. He was signed with the Chicago Bears and the Kansas City Chiefs, was recently in the XFL with the New York Guardians, where he led the XFL in sacks. Defensive tackle, who recently signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Kavon, oh, excuse me, Savon Walker. Savon, man, yes, what's sir, up, yes, man? Sir. How y'all doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Happy to be here, man. Man, we appreciate you, man. With, with the exotic name, man, Savon. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> man, I, I tell you what, man. The fans are not going to forget you at all with a name like that, bro. I think that's pretty dope on your ha- on your behalf. Shout out to your parents, man. Yes, sir. You got you got to make a statement before you make a statement. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Respect. All right, man. So uh, let's get into this thing, man. So what led to you signing with the XFL? And just talk about your overall experience with the organization. Uh, what led to me signing with the XFL, after uh, my little stint with the Chiefs, uh, didn't get any workouts, get any calls. So I basically started back working again. And then I uh, looked through my email one day, sent an email from the XFL, invited me to uh, the draft process. So I was like, Man, why not? Spoke to my agent about it. Took a chance with it. Just told myself I was going to go and have fun with it. Just be able to play football again. And why not be able to play, be, get paid to play football again? So I went out there, got uh, drafted by the New York Guardians, which is a team that I grew to love and like. And the fan base out there was amazing. But it was just a fun experience, man. Went out there, did my thing, did the best I could. I told myself I was going to go out there and have fun. And the chicks going to fall where they may. And they fell in the right places. Wish the season would have finished out because I always wonder where I could have finished off my season with the sack numbers and stuff like that. But overall, it was a great experience. I had fun out there, met some good guys, good little competition level, just ready to try to get some back to the NFL, man. Man, because I was going to ask you too, man, in terms of the competition, because I mean, you had, was it four and a half sacks and I think five games? So you were cooking. I mean, any passer should tell you that, man. So just like, how did you feel at that level with those type of guys? I mean, I felt I felt good, man. I felt like some of the guys that were there, they were former NFL guys, the guys trying to get back to the NFL. So they got the same type of hunger that I had. But I felt like the way I put it in my mind when I got there is like this is just a, a, a quick stop. It's a one-stop shop. I'm going to get in, get out, do what I can, have fun with it. I and like I did it. what I could with the five games that we had, man, just out there having fun and just playing relentless. I like that. Now, how do you stay humble through this process? Obviously, leading the XFL in sacks and now coming to Pittsburgh, a lot of people are thinking that you're almost a shoe in to be on the defensive line rotation. How do you stay humble through that process? I mean, me, I've always been an underdog, so I'm always going to keep that same mentality, man. I came from a smaller school. You know what I mean? Like, I'm from D.C., Southeast D.C. at that. Wait, 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 wait a minute, Savon. Wait, did you just say you came from a small school? Man, you went to the University <laughs> of Maryland. See, I take offense to that because I went to James Madison University. I wanted to go to Maryland. Right, I didn't right. I didn't so get the I'm offer, all right? <laughs> you see, we're in the Big Ten. You already know how that goes. And we're the smallest school in the Big Ten. I mean, we're one of the smallest schools in the Division One ranks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we didn't get a lot of looks in. Because when you're not winning, you know the looks not coming. So, Very true. I mean, so I can, I can consider us a little small pond too, but we did our thing here, man. <laughs> I like it, man. <laughs> and shoot, man, speaking on the uh, the Maryland uh, connection anyways, you're reunited with two of your former teammates, man, Anthony uh, McFarland and Antoine Brooks Jr., man. So just what's your feelings on that? Wait, wait, wait. You, you're saying those two, but you can't speak about Derwin Gray and Trey Allen. Oh, <laughs> man, I totally forgot about Derwin. You're right. Absolutely. Yes, yes. And me and Derwin, me and, me and Derwin with the high school. I knew Derwin since my freshman year high school. We've been on wow. every team together. And it's another reunited experience for us, man. That's dope, man. That is dope. We definitely got that whole Maryland connection. I'm going to say, is, is, what's, what's going on with Maryland, man? Y'all got this Pittsburgh pipeline going on right now, man. I mean, I feel like they finding the talent at, man. You know, we can look over a lot. So they, they find the talent in Maryland. So I, all I can do is praise it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm very happy for those guys. Antoine, I remember I, I, I co-hosted Antoine as a fishing visit at Maryland. So, like, this is very wow. special for me with Antoine. Anthony McFarland was always a tough guy. Great guy. You know, we offer the same area, so it's just a blessing, man. Like, literally, everybody's on the team is from this area. That's Trey, dope, man. Derwin, everybody literally is from DMV area. We went to Maryland, and then look at this now. On the same team, in the, in the, in the, on the top of the top football rankings. That, that is dope, like, man. The way football goes. That is dope right there. That's an awesome experience, too, man. And now, speaking of Anthony, man, so obviously, once he got drafted, you know, everybody talks about the different reports when they start digging in, and they said there were reports coming out 
about his attitude and things like that. And I said, man, what better person to speak on that than you being that you were teammates of his, man? So when you hear people say that he had attitude issues and things like that, man, what is your response to that? My response to that is that people who say anything from the outside looking at people take take passion as attitude like that. Mm. What I see from Anthony, he's always been a passionate guy who loves the game. Of course, you want to get mad when you lose and stuff like that. But other than that, he's a hardworking guy. I see no character issues within him. He's going to work hard. He's going to put that team on his back as he has to. Like he's one of those guys. He's a workhorse. He's like going to work every day because the, the background that he comes from. Of course, it's going to be a little bit of anger with that passion because literally football is a violent game. You got to play with passion, or you're going to get hurt up there. So, like it's, people really often misinterpret passion with a uh, bad attitude and stuff like that. But I don't see that happening. He's a great guy. I've been around him for a few years now, and from what I've experienced myself, I can't speak for other people. For all that friends, how we're going to do, we just want to play ball. Respect, man. Major respect. I like that. Now, this one's a little random. Who is your biggest inspiration or motivator in your life? Uh, everybody asks me that, but I always go to my mom, man. My mom is my biggest inspiration motivator. She has been since the day I stepped out of the womb, man. She's my biggest supporter, and everything I do is for her and my family, honestly. Is there any reason why? Uh, my mom raised me and my brother and sisters. Single mother of five. I'm the baby, mm. and I'm the biggest baby. But uh, <laughs> it's just the strength that she displayed to me over the years, even when I didn't know what we were going through. Like she always made sure I didn't know what was going on. And so, like I, then as I got older, I realized what was going on. But you know, she always sheltered us from the bad things, even though we were going through them a lot. I like that. No, that's dope. Now, what have you told yourself after being bounced around the NFL a little bit, and uh, almost being told like, "Hey, you're not good enough"? What have you been telling yourself? to make sure you could get back into this position? My thing is, I always told myself I'm going to keep fighting because I can't fight anymore. If I want some, I'm going to find a way to get back to it. And one thing that I've learned over the years, I've talked to a lot of vets on the teams I've been on. Like, I've been on, and then great D-lines I've been on. The Chiefs D-line was a great D-line. The Bears D-line in 2018 was a phenomenal D-line. Like, I've been around some good guys, and they told me it's not about where you land, it's about where's the best fit for you. So don't give up till you find that fit. Because I may not have been a fit for the Chiefs or the Bears, you know what I mean? But this may be my fit, and I'm going to make it my fit. Mm. It's all about finding the right fit for you, and you got to put your skills on display and get yourself out there. And that's what I'm I'm, I'm going to do. There's no, I'm, I want to do it, that's what I'm going to do. I love it. I like that. There it is. Talk to him, man. Talk to him. So, Savon, man, just transition out of the XFL. What ultimately led to you signing on with the Steelers? I feel as though it was just the, the film I put out there, man. Like, I... I didn't really talk to too many people, you know what I mean? I just kept my head down. I enjoyed the process. And then I just put, the, put everything I had to do, I put it on the field, man. I enjoy beating guys up with them between the lines without going to jail for it. <laughs> it's an amazing experience to get a little aggression out. But the XFL was just a, a great stepping stone for me to get back where I need to be. That's one of the most, that's one, some of the most fun I had playing football in a long time. Dude, that's awesome, man. That's great to hear. And, Honestly, man, we've had a couple of guys that have played in the XFL. They said the same thing. It was a very good, enjoyable experience for them, man. Yes, sir. Was there something about the fit with the Steelers that made you want to come here? Say again one more time. Was there something about the Steelers, something about the fit, the coaching staff, something that you know made sense to you? Why, I mean, you know why Coach you Dunbar here? is one of the most well-known oh, yeah. people Highly respected. in the football world. To be able to play, from, play with him and learn from him and all the things that I have in my toolbox that he can work on and build on, it's an honor to be on that team. And then it's just the tradition of the Steelers overall. Me being a defensive player, I used to play linebacker. Like Everything about defense is, in, is instilled in this team, and I love that about the Steelers nation. Absolutely, man. Hey, I can tell you firsthand, man, it's nothing like playing defense in that black and gold uni, man. You come out there. I can't wait. Man. <laughs> like, I said, man, defenders in Pittsburgh get the same type of recognition as offensive players anywhere else. Like only in Pittsburgh does that yes, happen. Sir. man. <laughs> yes, now, sir. now you're going to get an opportunity to, I mean, and Deke talked about this earlier, to legitimately compete to be in that D-line rotation. So what does that mean to you, man? It means a lot to me, man. It means I got to go in there with my head on straight and with my work clothes and my work boots and my pail ready for work every day. I'm going to go in there with the same mentality that I want to spot. I'm not here to just play around. I'm not here to just be a body. I'm here to want a spot. I want to help this team. I want to be in a position to put this team in places that they couldn't have been in past years. You know what I'm saying? I want to be mm-hmm. a helping piece to this team. And I will do anything I have to do, whether it's playing nose, free tech, guard, and whatever they need to be. That's what I want to do. I want to be a catalyst for this team. I like that. 
Now, I was uh, searching through Twitter here, and uh, I saw that back in the day you were voted by someone, or they, they recommended you as the best Big Ten Twitter account to follow, and that you were a natural at it. Now, my question is, have you thought about, I don't know, acting, entertaining? Because I'm assuming that means you have a good personality, right, to get that kind of honor. Uh, have you thought about, um, I if mean, you weren't playing football, like, were you thinking that type of road? One thing that always derailed me from jumping into that scene, I always had a little bit of stage fright. <laughs> no <laughs> way. That, wow. What they said is definitely true. I love people. I love making people laugh. I'm generally like the life of the party. I bring good energy anywhere I go. I just want to see people smile and be glad because I know how it feels to be down, so I want to be the person to pick anybody up. I love being out there. Do you know as a big dude, you got to be funny. So I'm a big funny man. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I feel like all the big guys I know, man, they, they are funny. Like, you got to have that personality. You're right. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you got to be able to bring it out. All right. Respect. Respect. Now, Savon, before we let you go, man, we ask all our guys to share their welcome to the NFL moment, man. So tell us, man, what was your official welcome to the NFL moment? Uh, let me think. Let me think. My official welcome to the NFL moment. It wasn't even like a particular play. It was an introduction to the game speed. Mm. And it wasn't even in game. I'm going to tell you that now. It was a <laughs> practice in KC. And we were doing long drive drill. It's my first time ever doing long drive drill. Oof. And mind you, I'm not in top shape just yet. This ain't play drive nonstop. Yeah. No matter what's going on, get right back down on that ball. And I'm just like, that moment right there was like the hey. eighth play of 15. The eighth play. <laughs> not 14, not 13, but the eighth play. And I had to make a decision in my head whether I wanted to be there or not. And that was my worst in the moment. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be a lot of things that you don't want to do, but you have to do. And that was a moment right there. I did not want to be there, but I had to be, man. But that's my worst NFL moment. Man. It was it was tough out there, man. I almost died. L- listen, <laughs> man, I understand that feeling 1,000%. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, man, you go through the long, they, it's either long play drive or they, they do the two minute drill, whatever it is. You're not allowed to sub, and like you said, it's gonna be 15 mm-hmm. hard plays. They could score on the first play. You still gonna get 15 out of it, <laughs> man. You question, and then, you know, me. as a D lineman, I'm, I'm fighting right. with a 300 pound at first before right. I gotta run. <laughs> right, it really makes you question: Do you love football? <laughs> Most definitely. <Man. laughs> Oh, they like say you, the man. sun and conditioning will turn a man into a, a baby real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no question. <laughs> I like that, man. Savon, man, it's been a blast having you on the podcast, man. We definitely appreciate you. Wish you nothing but the best. We're excited to watch you ball out for the Steelers this upcoming season, man. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Daddy, man. I hope you guys have a great day, man. No doubt, man. No problem, man. Have a good one.